Okay, so I got a comment that I want to respond to. This comment is from Wallflower. Dear beloved brother, can you make a video explaining about Luke chapter 17 verse 24? Because I don't understand if that refers to the rapture or the second coming. Very, very good question. First of all, let's go to that scripture, Luke chapter 17 verse 24, and then we will talk about the rapture. Luke chapter 17 verse 24 says, For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. So what Jesus meant here is when he comes back, everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to see it. It is not going to be a secret event. You're not going to say, oh, did you miss it on television there? Did you see it in the news? Jesus is back now. No, everybody's going to know. As Jesus himself said, when he comes back, it's going to be with great power and great glory. Now, this question is, does this verse about being seen, about being known by everybody, is that referring to the rapture or the second coming? And I think we began to answer that question already. But in order to answer that question fully, let's get into what the rapture really is. And I know there are a lot of different theories about what the rapture is and when it will happen. So a lot of people believe that Jesus is coming back first secretly to take his people out of the earth and then take them away to the wedding supper of the Lamb, and they will be there for seven years while the earth is going to go through a whole lot of tribulation, a whole lot of trouble. It's going to be the worst thing that, that's ever happened on earth between the natural disasters and political upheaval and civil upheaval. All kinds of stuff is going to happen. Plagues, pestilence, all kinds of things are going to happen on this earth in the last seven years. And the, the teaching is that the Antichrist, there will be a, a man who will uh, come upon the scene in the last days, and he will more or less rule this world for the last seven years. But the teaching is the church, Jesus' people, will not be here. He will come back secretly to take them away. And that is the rapture. So they will be, they will just basically disappear. And then after the seven-year tribulation, Jesus will then come back with all of those people again to execute judgment upon the earth and to establish his political kingdom here on the earth for a thousand years. Okay, so let's quickly go through a few of these scriptures. So this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. The Apostle Paul says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning those who have fallen asleep. In other words, those who have already died. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep or are dead in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep, who are dead, okay? For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord." Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, just as a side note here, notice in verse 15, Paul said, we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Paul didn't say they, speaking of a future generation, he said we. So he believed that he was in the last generation. Not that he was, but just to point that out, he believed that he was. He also said that in verse 17 as well. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So, yeah, he got that one wrong. However, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater here. So that's the rapture. Rapture meaning being caught up. When Jesus finally comes back to this earth to execute his judgment, those who are his will join him in the clouds and they will come back to Jerusalem and execute judgment upon all of his enemies. Now let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 52. Paul said, Now this I say, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Okay, this is the same event that Paul talked about in 1 Thessalonians. So in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, 
For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. What does he mean by changed here? So in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, John gives us the answer. He said, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, that is, the revelation of Jesus, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we shall be changed and be like him. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul also talks about this change or this transformation that will happen when Jesus comes back. He said, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body. That's pretty much what John said according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So far, this is what we have. When Jesus comes back, his people that are alive at that time will be raptured up together with him in the clouds to meet him in the air, and they will be changed. They won't have their normal physical human body. They will have a body like his. But let's read a little bit more about what's going to happen. Jude chapter 1 verse 14, Jude said, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. There he is coming in the clouds, okay? Because we know that in other parts of scripture, clouds speak of many, many people, okay? So the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all of their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So let's get this straight here. When Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ will rise first. That means those who are dead who are really his people. By the way, Jesus' people are are few and far between, okay? Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, okay? Those who are dead in Christ will rise, and then those who remain at that time will be caught up together with the Lord in the air, then they will come back to execute judgment upon the ungodly. But some Christians believe that there will be a rapture that happens before that rapture, like Jesus comes back again and again. So in their theology, Jesus comes a total of three times. But where do they get the idea that there's going to be two raptures? One of their arguments is we're not supposed to go through God's wrath. You know, God's people do not go through God's wrath. And that makes sense. But does that mean that God's people will not go through the tribulation protected? Listen, the church has always gone through tribulation, especially in the first few hundred years. If you read of church history, what the church has gone through, the horrible things, the tribulation they they went through. It's horrible, but God saw them through it. Look at Noah in the flood. They went through it. They went through God's wrath, protected. But let's look at some scripture that's used to say that Jesus is going to come back to secretly take away some people. Luke chapter 17, verses 34 through 37, Jesus said, I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed, one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. One will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? Great question. So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the egos will be gathered together. What did Jesus mean by this? A careful look into Scripture will prove that Jesus was simply talking about death. He was just using a figure of speech. We know that because if we look in Matthew chapter 24, in the same context where he's talking about two men being in the field, one taken and the other left, two women grinding together at the mill, one taken and the other left, just before that, he talks about this taken. What does it mean by taken? Just before that, in verse 37, this is Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, 
and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Look at that. Look at that. Took them all away. This means die. Obviously, Jesus is talking about people who died in the flood, who were taken away. And then he goes on again to describe two men were in the field, one taken and the other left. As it was in the days of Noah, God had to wait until all the righteous people died first and then the flood came. But of course, there are those few people that went through the flood. In the same way, God has to wait until the older, more righteous generation dies off first and then the tribulation will come. Then the end will come. Then God's wrath will be poured out. Of course, there will be the few that will go through it, protected just as Noah and his family was. God could have taken Noah out of the earth if he wanted to, but he didn't. A careful study of the scripture will tell you that Methuselah was the last righteous person to die before the flood. In fact, his name, Methuselah, means his death shall bring. Enoch named him Methuselah because Enoch knew of the coming flood and he knew that the death of his son would bring the flood. And scripture proves that the very year that Methuselah died is when the flood came. An ancient Jewish document, Sefer Hayashar, or the book of Jasher, chapter 5, verse 5, says this, And all who followed the Lord died in those days, before they saw the evil which God declared to do upon the earth. All of the Lord's people had to die off first. Then God's wrath came. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1 says, The righteous perishes and no man takes it to heart. In other words, you don't understand it. Merciful men are taken away while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from the evil. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. What does this all mean? Jesus will come back and people will be raptured up to be with him. And people will be changed. Their bodies will be changed to be like his body, his resurrected body. And he will come back to execute judgment. But the verses that a lot of people use to establish a pre-trib rapture are actually verses that are talking about people dying off. And think about this for a minute. It's happening now. There are so many people who are righteous that are dying off. So many churches are closing, especially in the West. That's because their congregation was mainly elderly and they all were just died off and the newer generation didn't want to go to church. There are a lot of good people that are being taken away right now. The stage is being set for God's wrath to be poured out. And I believe we have begun to see it even now. Do I believe we are in the seven-year tribulation? No. This is just dress rehearsal. We are just getting ready for it. But it's not far away. There will be many people taken away. They will die off. But there will be the remnant, Noah's family as it were, that will go through the tribulation. But somebody says, it says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, Jesus said, I will keep you from the hour of trial. I will keep you, my church, from the hour of trial. In other words, that Jesus will take his church away. That's not what he said. And by the way, he only said that to one church out of seven in the book of Revelation. The rest of the six, well, he didn't say that to them. I submit he was talking about a different trial. He was talking about a different tribulation. Like I said, church history is full of tribulation. But like Jesus said, in this life, you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world.